we've entered into 2021. So it's a brand new year for all of us and I feel like God has a lot of good things for us this year. Uh, we still have things we're battling through the COVID and the uncertainty in our nation and things like that. But God is faithful. That's what we're always to remember. So tonight we're going to do something different. Just want to take the time that we had together on Sunday night for our New Year's service. And I read just some bullet points from some of the words that were shared uh, for the church or for the body at WFA. And then some things I shared. So what you're going to see right now is just a logo of WFA. But you're going to be able to listen to the audio from Sunday night. And you'll be able to hear some of the things that was shared there. I think it'll bless you. I ask you to pray into it. Be praying for our nation. Be praying for one another, covering one another in this season. And praying for the body at WFA, the work that God's called all of us to do together. I love you and appreciate you. And look forward to an exciting 2021. God bless you. Enjoy the audio portion of the Sunday PM service now. Now... Normally we have handouts with everything, and uh, so we're we're going to do it according to the Spirit. So you just need to tune in and discern what God's speaking through others, and uh, I'm sure you'll get everything exactly as it was shared with those that have sent in words. We'll put it on our website later on. So. Uh, Get ready. I'm gonna just I don't just share some bullet points from some of the words that were given. I'm not gonna by any means read the length of them or anything like that, and uh, get down to what uh, what the point of it is. You can read all of them. I encourage you to do that, and um, as you do that, you can be sensitive to the Spirit. And I know the Lord's speaking to you. I hope you're seeking the Lord for what He's speaking to you and speaking in your heart. And uh, for this year, because I believe God has good for us in 2020. In fact, I understand that's his nature, that he is good. The Lord is good. His love endures forever. And so, um, just with that in mind, I'm going to read, um, again, some bullet points. Let me get to one on the read first here. Um, God's supernatural light always triumphs over darkness. It always illuminates what is hidden in darkness. It will bring fresh revelation and a better understanding of the Father's truth and plans for us. So that's a bullet point. There's far more. There's got a lot of ministry words in it that you can read. It's a word that Angela Strickland gave and uh, sent in. So here's um, a word that uh, the Lord gave to thee. I'm just reading a bullet statement out of it. I believe that 2021 will reveal all that God has been doing during 2020. The actual work that was going on. And the picture was a garden that was being tended to, but looked like it was not tended to. It looked uncared for, but in, in reality it was being cared for. So the soil has been stirred, weeds have been pulled, but the result... What is deeply rooted in that ground will come forth to reveal God hasn't stopped working even when things didn't look promising back in 2020 that God was working. 2021, 2021 will reveal new growth. And so uh, the emphasis of that is that God was working underneath and we don't see it a lot of times. We want to see change and things like that. And... Um, but the fact is God was working, tending and caring for, and it will come forth. And uh, so Shane Watson, word that he had sent in, just one paragraph. As the year, as we near the end of 2020, because he had this in 2020, the atmosphere will change in 2021 towards a place of clarity to see things in the spiritual as he, speaking of God, sees them. Uh, we will see new life in situations that we thought were dead. And we uh, will feel what will seem like new breath, both in worship and in the Word. And so what he had sensed was like a 
just a fog that had settled in with you couldn't see with clarity, but as we progress, begin to clear, and that uh, God's going to bring clarity to the atmosphere and all. Next one, Ambie Watson. I believe God is lining up 2021 to accelerate a download of His Spirit on His people from those who are preparing their hearts and minds to receive. 2020 has been a year of transition as we have prepared our hearts to set us up for what is next for us in the new year, 2021. So God is lining things up. So with those things in mind, uh, out of the out of those, and we have far less words given this year. I think it's the fact that people are a little bit fearful after 2020 to share anything and put it in writing. <laughs> Myself, I'm, no. Now, the fact is we have a lot of our people that have had a lot of family in that have a prophetic nature to them. And then we also have people that are unfortunately battling some of this sickness through our family gatherings, through the holidays and all. And uh, so we didn't have as many. But... God is still faithful, and I feel like there will be others to come in. As they do, we'll post them. But um, so the thing is, the hidden work of God that was going on in 2020. I shared this morning that I almost got discouraged about 2020, not about what all was going on. That was bad enough. <clears throat> but just about the fact that where was uh, the insight and revelation about these things coming about. And I mentioned there were uh, some... Of prophets that had words that spoke of plagues or things like that coming. <clears throat> and so, but they were very generalized, to be honest. But as I read through the book of Acts, which was, the book of Acts has the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost is the absolute purest form of the Holy Spirit that we can see in the Word of God. Why? There was no agenda because nobody knew what to expect. If you've been raised in Pentecost, in a Pentecostal church, then, let, let, let me say this. If you was raised in a Baptist church, Pentecostal church, Methodist, it doesn't matter what it is, you have some uh, bias or a little tinted glasses about how you perceive the Holy Spirit. But the thing is, from what I understand, He's the only God on this earth. God the Father's on the throne, God the Son at the right hand, and the Holy Spirit was sent to the earth on the day of Pentecost. And so there's a bias. If you're Pentecostal, you have your perception of what the Holy Spirit moving looks like. If you're Baptist, you have your perception of what it probably looked like back then, but it'll never happen again. Methodist, you know, happened with John Wesley, Charles Wesley, but that was back then, but it stopped then. The Presbyterians, it happened at the Cane Ridge Revival. But that's been it. They probably don't even remember it by now. Uh, some like things like that. You just need to church, study church history. Every church organization has, has a move of the Spirit in it, basically, that preach Jesus Christ as the only means of salvation. They experience some kind of outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It might be covered up in their history, but it's there. But here's the thing. On the day of Pentecost, the purest form of the, and response to the Holy Spirit was that day. Because nobody had any preconceived idea. Nobody had a thought of what it was. They just knew that there was a promise that Jesus had said the Father was going to give. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, would come. But they didn't know what it would look like. And so how I many you know that day when the Holy Spirit, Jesus took and poured out the promise of God is what Peter preaches in Acts 2. And when Jesus poured out the promise of God, the Holy Spirit came. And when it did, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit had these things that happened. One of them was tongues the other of, of fire that set upon each one's head. The other one was the tongues that uh, the one speaking could not understand, but the crowd could understand. And the praises of God, the, the, the wonderful things that God has done, those things were being expressed. And God began to move, and Peter stood up by the power of the Holy Spirit and preached the first, since Jesus, the first Holy Spirit-inspired message since Jesus had ascended to the right hand of the Father. Totally led by the Spirit. He's preaching under inspiration of the Spirit. And that day 3,000 are saved. So from that we see the Holy Spirit moving through the book of Acts. And yet we see things happening, tragic things happening, that, that they had no idea was about to happen. They just encountered it. Like James' death I mentioned this morning. Peter being in prison. What they did, they responded. They prayed. They did what they could. So the fact that COVID came in 2020, 
20 and the problems there is another emphasis on the fact that we might have the, we do have the Spirit of God living in us and the Spirit of God is there to show us things to come but He doesn't show us everything to come and we learn to live by faith and not by sight and we learn to trust God in our daily walk with God and so and if, and if we do have a prophecy or a word from the Lord that we believe in Know that God does it today. It has touched my life. It's touched many of your lives. Having a powerful prophetic word from the Lord that bears witness. The thing is, we begin to look at it through the lens of our understanding of where we're at. And a lot of times it doesn't look like what we thought it would look like when we get to it. In fact, me being called to a frontline ministry would never in my mind be preaching. It would be out ministering prophetically and sharing my testimony. That was how I saw myself. And God just let me walk down that road and didn't mind it a bit that that's what I thought ministry would look like. Frontline ministry in my life would look like this. Had no idea it would be being a pastor. But he does that and just goes, you go ahead down the road, you're going the right direction. But when you get there, you'll find out what it's like. So that's usually how prophecy is, okay? So for this year, a couple of things that I have. First of all, uh, would you take time to record your thankfulness to God for what he's done in 2020? Would you please take time to record, to write out or type out your thankfulness, your expression of gratitude to God for what He has done for you in 2020. You're still here. You're still here because God wants you to be here. And I think through it, we might just have gotten a sigh of relief like, oh, this thing's over. But how many know it's not over? Things are still going on. Just like the battle's still here, we have uh, Ray Strickland in the hospital. He has the uh, bilateral pneumonia that comes with COVID. I've just been told uh, Stephen and Dilcia are, are sick. And all they haven't been to church. These all came from being around family or something. Um, Shannon Walker texts that she's running a fever uh, right before we came to service. And so this thing's still going on and we need to pray about it. But we need to look back with thankfulness for what God has done and record His thankful, our thankfulness to Him and our gratitude and express it to Him. Because it's so easy to get this idea of just getting through and we get through it and oh, there's something else to do without taking time to be thankful for His goodness. And so just encouraging you to do that. That's the next thing. So record your thankfulness, your gratitude to God and express it. The next thing is recognize his confirmation, that wasn't me, that was Jonathan. <laughs> Recognize his confirmation when you're seeking him or when you're asking him for insight or when you're just wondering. Does, has anybody ever just begin to wonder about something like, uh, does my life really matter? Does anybody care about me. Does anybody ever have thoughts? Raise your hand and I'll do counseling after service. I'll refer you to somebody. Uh, no. You know, we, I'm talking about when you have those thoughts like, does it matter what I'm doing? You know, and then all of a sudden, in about three days, somebody comes up to you and goes, I just want to let you know how much you mean to me. And I want you to know how much you bless me. I want, I want you to know that you, on back, you shared this with me and you prayed with me and you're going. And all of a sudden, God has confirmed your thought. This random, this thing that's going on. Uh, so recognize his confirmation. We were coming back from the holidays and from Christmas at our daughter. And, and uh, it was Janice's turn to drive. And so I was back resting. I was just, I was wondering, like, the thing I just got through saying. So I'll know, you can know I'm just like you. Or maybe you can know I'm the one that needs counseling. I was wondering... Does it matter, Lord? You know, does it really, you know, or has it been effective? Has my, you know, is anything? And we get home, we get all of our mail, and there's a card left in our mailbox. Just this long, detailed card about what Janice and I mean to this person. That they can't, they don't live here anymore. They came home for Christmas, and they made it a point to come by our house and drop off a card. And when we read it, I told her, this is what I was thinking, come back, just having this wondering, you know, Lord, what, I want to know I'm effective. I want to know this matters, what I'm doing. 
So, and all of a sudden you have a blank. You know, like you can't think of anybody you minister to. You can't think of anything good you've done. Has anybody ever been there? Like in that moment, like you go blank. Like, and right about two days later, uh, we have a group text with the, the board, the leadership, and uh, we share different things and sometimes on their videos and things like that. And a video was shared by Krista and it's about an hour and a half long. So you got to be really committed to watch an hour and a half video to impress somebody else. I, a 15 minute video, I'm good for that. An hour and a half one. I'll be, I won't even watch me preach that long. But anyway, I always try to honor by doing that. And I was listening to it, but in about five minutes into it, three minutes of that video, and I did watch the message, by the way, and it's a good message, but three minutes of that video spoke to my thoughts. In a random rabbit trail, the minister went on. And I had Jana, I said, I want you to listen to this. As she knew what I was sharing and what we were praying, I want you to listen to this. Recognize the confirmations that God gives you to these random things that might want to bring doubt or uncertainty to you or question, is God working in my life? Or the prayer that you pray randomly, recognize because God answers them oftentimes and we can miss it if we're not careful. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, We all do. Okay. So there's two things. Record your thankfulness to God for 2020 and express it to Him. And then recognize His confirmation. His, His affirming you. We all like words of affirmation. His affirming you and affirming that you're His child and affirming that He's pleased with you and affirming that His hand's on your life and affirming that what you're doing does is effective because how many know the enemy comes and he fires thoughts in our head to make us think and to make us doubt and to make us question and make us wonder and God brings forth confirmation. If we get so caught up in life, we miss the confirmation. But if you make it a point, to get it. And when you do, make a note of it, okay? I saved the card, by the way. I saved good letters and good cards. Does anybody else do that? Sometimes you look back and find money that you missed. That's somebody else's testimony in the church. Okay, first thing I've sensed for 2021 is, I shared this morning, stay current. Stay current. The fact of Loving to know what the future holds. Loving the prophetic. Loving the fact the Spirit of God leads us, guides us. He speaks. John 16 tells us when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will take from what is mine and make it known to you. He will show you what is to come. That's the promise of the Holy Spirit that Jesus gave us in His last day on earth before He went to the cross. Of the work of the Holy Spirit speaking sharing with us and even showing us things to come. He didn't say He would show us everything to come. He would show us those things that we need to know. And He'd give us insight into them. But staying current is a key. And in, in tune with what God is doing now, presently. Uh, the word current means in the present time. How many know that when God introduced Himself to Moses, He introduced Him and Moses said, Who will I say sent me? And God says, I am that I am. How many know that God's current? Because He's always, He's present, He's now. He's now. And so, staying in step, staying in tune uh, with 2020, the COVID and the election results and all the turmoil and things that are going on and even our state, uh, please make sure you have voted. If you haven't voted, get out and vote and all. But uh, things that are going on, there's so much uncertainty and, and concern and all that people would, people, here's the thing that's going on. A lot of good people, the enemy's trying to get them to give up. I mean, just in like, like what, you know, you can't, you, you can't get together. The uncertainty of COVID and, and the, the, you know, both sides are saying the election was cheated on. All these things and who can you trust? The enemy tries to wear us down with this give up. What's the matter? What's the, what's the use? It's a lie. Stay current because God is faithful. And God will speak to us and let us know what is going on. He will give us that leading of His Holy Spirit or a word day by day. I love it when 
We have our devotion time and a word just comes alive or a scripture. Or we're listening to the, a, a song or something. I mean, God just drops in our heart one phrase out of it. Things like that. Stay current day by day because we've got to have that in these present times. Stay current. It's no longer a kumbaya season where you can just get by. The enemy's using real ammunition. He always has, but there's times when the battle gets intense. And we're in one of those times right now. The battle is very intense. Stay current. Stay in tune to what your commander in chief, your father, is saying by his Holy Spirit. So, staying in step with the Spirit and the Word. Uh, God was faithful in 2020. I shared that this morning. God's going to be faithful in 2021. So next thing is this. So the first thing was stay current. Next thing is this. Isaiah 61. I preached this morning my, what I have for 2020, 2021. Is today the scripture fulfilled in your hearing. The word of God is being fulfilled as we hear what the spirit is saying to us. When the spirit makes it alive. Jesus made that declaration. It's found in Luke 4.21. When he read Isaiah's promise about the Messiah, he said, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. It's, it's that thing of hearing what God is saying now. And how many of you know he was in Nazareth and a lot of people couldn't hear what God was In fact, that community could not hear what God was saying. Jesus was inspired by the Spirit. He was the Son of God in flesh. And he was declaring the word of God that was alive for them right then. But how many know he wasn't able to do anything in that community? In fact, people got furious with him. Because they were not current with what God was doing. They were still stuck back in the back of what God was going to do. And how they perceived it and their perception. We have a word for this season that says God's going to do something new in our church. It won't be like anything else that's ever been done. Miss Martha uh, gave the word to me when we were praying about when she was praying about Shane and Ambie Cheryl uh, Daniels confirmed that word uh, in an almost identical phrase that I've shared uh, the day we did the service where, uh, to, of ordaining them and moving them into the ministry of praise and worship uh, leaders, pastors we need to stay current with what God is speaking and God's going to do something it may look totally different and if we're not current we won't recognize it we might resist it See, the people in Nazareth didn't recognize it, so they resisted it. How I many you know they went from saying, when they marveled at his gracious words that flowed off from his lips, and then he said, you'll say to me, physician, heal thyself. Do the miracles here that you've done in Capernaum. He hadn't done any miracles in Capernaum. That was a prophecy he would be doing in Capernaum. But he was speaking that. And when he spoke that, he said there were many uh, lepers in Elisha's time. But, I mean, there was many lepers in Elijah's time, Elisha's time, but he was sent to none of them but Naaman, that was a Gentile. And there were many widows in Elijah's time, but he wasn't sent to any of them but the widow of Zarephath. And he was saying God's miracle power didn't move in, in Israel as much during the two greatest prophets' season of leading Israel, but he moved and touched Gentiles because the people of Israel did not recognize the season. They weren't current. The people got furious and ready to kill Jesus. Why? They resisted the move instead of recognizing the move. I want to be one that is current with God and recognizes what God is saying. Today, the scripture is being fulfilled in our hearing. God has things he's speaking to us. Going back to the word about being current. God has things he's going to speak to you that are a now word that you need to lay hold of and go, God wants to do this now in my life. Which means I take hold of now. It might not manifest right now. But it means I take hold of it by faith and believe it, begin to walk in it. And he is faithful to fulfill what he has said. My part is to believe, take God at his word. Believe, take God at his word. Recognize the spirit of God on that scripture. On that word that he's given. The promises of God are yes in Christ and the amen. Which is the declaration of agreement is spoken by us to the glory of God. When we hear a promise that is alive for us, a scripture that is alive for us, coming into agreement with it and a declaration of the agreement. They, uh, you've heard me say this before. Paul wrote and said, taking David's statement, I believe, therefore I speak. And Paul said, 
We believe, therefore we have spoken. When the same spirit of faith, I believe, therefore I speak. In other words, when I receive something from God, I begin to agree with it, and my mouth starts lining up with that word. In other words, circumstances might say different. Man, powerful testimony of, of uh, Jeff Martin's wife, Lisa, on the ventilator with COVID and wanting to pull the plug. And if you followed that, and she walked out of the hospital the other day. I mean, this woman's a miracle. And, and, and Jeff Woodnot, who used to pastor First Presbyterian, just a great guy, friends with some of our church, used to bring his, uh, when he was pastoring, he'd bring his confirmation for his teens. They'd have a confirmation service. He'd bring them to different denominations where they could experience a service in different denominations. He was it's a great guy. He had sat on the back with a group of teens. He had called and said, I'm bringing somebody on Sunday night, a group of my teens. I wanted to experience what a Pentecostal church is like. He'd do that to a back. He said they could understand. But uh, his wife is a miracle from God. But they had to stand against and they had to choose to agree with, I believe God's going to raise her up when nothing else seemed to agree with it in the natural. Doctors didn't agree. Circumstances didn't agree. All that. They had to stand. So we, we have to take the promise of God and say, it is yes in Christ. And I'm saying amen. I'm saying I agree with it. My mouth is lining up with what God promises. I might not see it, but I'm going to speak it. And I'm going to believe it. And it's God's part to fulfill it. That's a good word from the Lord, by the way. The kingdom of God will continue to advance and grow in 2021. It might not look like things were growing on God's side in 2020, but they were, and they're still growing. His kingdom, so you'll know that it's growing, His kingdom will have no end. Before that says the increase of His kingdom. So His kingdom is still advancing, and God is still advancing. So Isaiah 61, the promises are in that. And I stopped this morning. I might go back and preach some more on the rest of it. I've been reading all through that. There's just several chapters in there. But Luke 4.21, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Okay? Next is honey from the rock. I was walking the other day. And has anybody ever heard this, honey from the rock? You, oh, it's a what? It's a song? Where have I been? It's an old song. It's a great song. It's a great song. Do we have another statement? I didn't know it was a song. Does anybody know it's a scripture? Where's it at? In the Bible. It is found in one place. And if you can guess it without Googling it right now, my wife will give you a piece of candy. Anyway. Psalms 81. I was walking and praying the other day, which is my norm. I'd rather walk and pray than stand and pray or sit and pray. And uh, the Lord dropped that in my heart. And it just stayed with me. And so I was praying the next day and He dropped in my heart again. So began to pray into it. And so finally I went and looked it up because I knew it, it, I knew it had to be spiritual, honey from the rock, because it makes no sense any other way. Right? I mean, without God, it makes no sense. But it's, uh, it's in Psalms 81. And in this psalm, it's a psalm about the blessing of God that's available. And so I'm going to just give you three verses out of it. Verse 10, 13, and 16. Verse 10, 13, and 16. It's only 16 verses long. You can read it. But the Lord is inviting Israel to receive the very best of His blessings. The very best of His blessings. Verse 10, it says, Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it with good things. You might have heard that quoted before. Open your mouth wide, and I'll fill it with good things. So this is the offer that God, he's, there's a whole list of things he's just sharing of his goodness. And, what he ha and then he says, if, just open your mouth wide and I'll fill it with good things. Then he says this as it goes on in verse 13, to receive this blessing, this is what needs to be done. In other words, it's a 
conditional promise. I want to I want to fill you. I want to bless you. Open your mouth wide, and I'll fill it. But here's the condition: verse ten, verse thirteen. If my people would only listen to me, if Israel would only follow my ways, and it's this this condition: if listening and obeying, listening and obeying, hearing and responding. And if we do that, then he goes into this in verse number 16. So God wants to fill us with good things, but us hearing and obeying. And then the Lord promises if we'll hear and obey. Verse 16. You will be fed with the finest of wheat, with honey from the rock. I will satisfy you. Now, honey represents in the Word of God blessings and abundance. This, anybody ever heard just like the icing on the cake? Just like on top of everything else, God does this. It's kind of that overflow, the land of milk and honey. Promise of God giving them a place of abundance. So here's the thing, I feel like God wants to give honey from the rock. And here's the thing, He wants to bring sweet out of what's been very, very hard. Honey from the rock. It's... It, there's a, the riddle that Samson gave to uh, his attendants when he was going to marry the Philistine woman. And on the way down, he goes and uh, on his journey and a lion comes out and the Spirit of God comes on him. He tears the lion literally and kills him. And, and so he goes out and meets this Philistine woman, goes back and tells his parents, this is the woman I want to marry. They're going down and he... he slips off the path to where he had killed this lion and he checks out the carcass and bees have built a beehive in it and there's honey in it. And he dips his hands into the honey that's there inside of the skeleton now of a lion and he eats it and he shares it with his mom and dad but he doesn't tell them anything about it. And you know, then later on he shares this riddle with his attendants and said, if you can figure out this riddle and it's about out of the eater something to eat, out of the strong something sweet. And they can't figure it out, but they finally get his fiance to nag him until she gets the answer and they have the answer. But it was the fact, out of this that the enemy sent to kill me, God gave me victory over it. He didn't just give me victory over something that was too strong for me. Later on, he gave me above and beyond that. He gave me sweetness. He gave me honey from the rock. He gave me blessings out of a hard place. And I feel like God really wants to do that in this year. I believe there's those times it's just been hard. And through 2020, into 2021, that God wants us to trust Him and He wants to bring honey from the rock. He wants to bring blessings out of a hard place. So here we go. It's to wind down. So for 2020, it's been hard for some, much harder for others. And all we've all had things we've dealt with. But 2021, we're moving into a new season. We don't know what all will take place. We know this, God will be faithful. Our Father will be faithful. He is faithful in 2020. He'll be faithful in 2021. Our part is listen and obey Him. So with that in mind, in John chapter 1, Jesus called Philip to follow Him. He calls Philip to follow Him. It's recorded there in John chapter 1. And then Philip goes finds his friend Nathaniel and says this. In John 1 verse 45, Philip found Nathaniel and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Anybody remember Nathaniel's response? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You know what? Can anything good come out of 2020? Absolutely. Absolutely. Can anything good come out of all this stuff that we get focused on? Absolutely. Because that's how our God is. That's how our Father is. He brings good out of bad. What the enemy means for harm. He works it for good for those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. I love what Nathaniel said. Can anything good come from Nazareth? And Philip said this to him. You got to come and see. You got to follow. You see, we got to continue to walk this out to see God's goodness. We got to continue to walk by faith to see Him work. So good can come out of these things if we'll take time. Remember, 
Record your thankfulness for what God did in 2020. Recognize His confirmation when He speaks to you and when He's letting you know things where the enemy's trying to beat you down and God comes in and says, oh, the enemy's telling you that. Let me show you what's going on, really. You are being used. You are being effective. You are going to be victorious. You are growing. Now, remember those things. Remember what I talked about also. What is it? First of all, stay current. Next, Isaiah 61, Luke 4, 21. The Scripture is fulfilled today in your hearing. Honey from the rock, even from the hard place. God will bring sweetness if we will listen and follow Him. And as He does that, He will do what no other can do for us.